In this video, I interview my parents, my in-laws, and my wife after their first ever tabletop role-playing game experience, and I want to share their thoughts with you. Have you ever had someone in your life that you really wanted to get to try role-playing games, but you were too afraid to ask them? Maybe you think they'd really enjoy it, but working up the courage to even try and explain what a role-playing game is might seem really daunting. And maybe if you're anything like me, you grew up in the late throes of the satanic panic and you think, my parents will never be on board with playing Dungeons and Dragons. Well, let me start off by encouraging you that the worst thing that can possibly happen is that they just say no. But thanks to some strange life circumstances, which I go over more in this video if you're interested, I'm currently in a house with my wife, my parents, and my in-laws, and I thought, what better opportunity to try and show them something that I really love, role-playing games. Now, aside from my wife, my parents and in-laws are by no means gamers. They've played a few board games I've forced on them over the years, but they typically don't like competitive style games. They were either completely opposed to the name Dungeons and Dragons, or they had no idea at all what their expectations were going into their first role-playing game. Afterwards, I thought, this is a very interesting data set that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, and I'm sure there are folks out there who would be interested. And if you're anything like me at all, these hobbies can really grow into something you love and appreciate, and even can connect you to different creative outlets and longtime friendships. So why wouldn't you want to share this with the people who are closest to you, like friends and even family members who've never played a role-playing game or tried anything even remotely in the ballpark? But I won't lie, I was intimidated to ask my parents because in the past, they didn't even want me to play things like Magic the Gathering. Like I've stated in other videos, I grew up in a small town with a very conservative family. Even the names of things like Dungeons and Dragons were taboo in our house. So how did I get these five adults together to play a game of Shadow Dark? Well, let's talk about that before we get into the interviews. So first off, I knew that we had a day coming up on the calendar where there was absolutely nothing going on. So I just said, Hey guys, I have this hobby that I really love and enjoy, and I'd love to share it with you guys. I don't know if you'd like it or not, to be honest, but I think there's something in it for everybody. It's kind of like a board game with a little bit of improv, and you get to play as these characters that you can either create yourself, or if you're happy to, I'll make them up for you. I kept my pitch pretty simple. I didn't want to overwhelm them with details, and in the end, I ended up just rolling everyone's characters for them. Like I said, none of my family members are really gamers, and they had no concept of what to even expect, no frame of reference for what tabletop role-playing games are. So I thought, I won't even mention the world's most popular role-playing game. So instead, I just said, there's this little indie game called Shadow Dark, which is very streamlined and minimalist. You don't have a lot of rules you have to figure out. In fact, I'll interpret most of the things for you. You just tell me what you want to do. I did pitch the idea that there are several roles or classes that you can play, and to my surprise, my mom actually picked that she wanted to play a thief, so of course, I made her a classic halfling thief as close to Tolkien as I can legally get. My wife, Chelsea, who is steeped in all kinds of fantasy books, wanted to play a wizard, of course. And then my dad mentioned that bards sounded cool. Everybody else seemed fairly neutral, so I picked classes for them and filled out the rest of the party. Now, knowing that my particular family has a sort of aversion to words like witchcraft and sorcery, I decided to run a quaint little adventure called The Waking of Willoughby Hall. I basically pitched the adventure as a haunted version of Clue, where you run around a Victorian-era manor trying to find clues before things get too out of hand. And let me tell you guys, this is a great first adventure for people who've never played a TTRPG before. There's a lot of classic whimsical references to fairy tales and things like that, and it never gets too dark and gritty. I think they really enjoyed the idea of running around this mansion pulling out drawers and finding little secrets here and there. And really, it's a pretty simple concept for an adventure. I won't spoil it, but definitely go check out The Waking of Willoughby Hall. It's by the same guy who wrote Knave, so it's really great stuff. And also, because Shadow Dark is such a simple, minimalist, straightforward game, I don't think I even busted out the rulebook once during our two sessions of play. And just to really reiterate what an interesting spread of different walks of life my family members are comprised of, we have my dad, who is a former Baptist minister, my mom, who's a substitute school teacher, my father-in-law, who does sales for small businesses all the way up to Fortune 500 companies, and my mother-in-law, who has done everything from life coaching to marriage counseling. And then, of course, we can't forget my wife, who is a professional pianist. So if you're looking out there and you're thinking, hmm, are they the kind of person I can get to play a tabletop role-playing game? The answer is yes. 
These are by no means your traditional gamers, but they were willing to give it a shot based on my enthusiasm and a little prodding. Okay, Jorvin, enough talk. Let's see those interviews. Get on with it already. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! Yeah! So without further ado, here are my family members talking about their experience playing their first ever tabletop role-playing game, Shadow Dark. What did you enjoy the most about playing a tabletop role-playing game, or what did you not think you'd enjoy that you did? All right, or like things I didn't expect that were interesting about the game. Yeah. Like, I guess the thing that first comes to my mind that I enjoyed was the building of the character, even though you did a lot of the background, and because it was our first time playing, you built the characters for us but you sort of had our input on what we would like our character, who we would want it to be. And the way you set it up for me was like ideal. Um, and you were I, a bard. Yeah, I was a bard. And uh, so it's kind of like fits my own personality and my own background and skills a lot. But I like the fact that all the depth of the character and his um, attributes and all that kind of stuff, his skills that he had and how I was able to use those skills to help solve the game or you know reach the goal with the group so that was kind of cool the all the interaction but you know because like if you're yeah a cooperative too. aspect of it but if you know like if you're just playing a game like monopoly or something like that you have a little piece that you play and it has no depth to it right everybody's kind of the same mm -hmm. uh, but this everybody was so different and so i like that aspect of it there was a lot of depth to the, the characters and things like, which helps your imagination, you know, in the game. There's a lot of imaginative stuff about the game that very creative in it. And the fact that it just, you never knew where it was going. Yeah. You know, it turned, took turns here and there. It's like reading a book or, you know, watching a, a movie or a mystery movie. So I like that aspect of it. There's a lot of things I really liked about it that I didn't, didn't expect to. So I enjoyed it in that way. Yeah, you mentioned that cooperative element because it's, you know, a lot of games yeah. that you play are Yeah, a lot of games are very competitive. Um, some people don't like competitive games, um, but it was like easy going, you know, yeah. and, and a lot of fun. And you didn't feel that um, competitive spirit, you know, in it. You were competing against the plot of the game, yeah. sort of some other character in the game who was you know, like not a giant sometimes. Yeah, they'll, like a giant or whatever. So, or, you know, uh, the room that you were in. What is the thing that you'd be most excited about or would bring you back to play another game like this? Uh, what I thought of immediately was a new, um, a new plot, a different um, adventure. Yeah, a, diff a new adventure, a different adventure uh, with a different goal. Uh, just to see, you know, where it's going because it's like, again, watching a movie or reading a book, you want you don't want the same thing over and over again. Which, again, I'm just going to compare it to a board so game, you know? yeah. Monopoly. It's like <laughs> it's the same game every time. Yeah, right. You know, it's like I probably haven't played Monopoly in 30 years yeah. for that very reason. You know, and my you personality. This, like almost every week, there'd be a new. Yeah, exactly. With my personality, I get easily bored. Yeah. It's something that's the same thing over and over again. I like new adventures. So I could see where these kind of games could be something that you would always look forward to doing because there's always something new coming at you. It's not the same thing every time. So that's basically it. What were your expectations going into it? Since you'd only heard of things like Dungeons and Dragons, but you've never played any of these. Hmm. I don't know. I, I you know, I really came into it open minded when not trying to put a lot of expectation into it. I didn't really know what to expect, you know, because it's something I've never done before or watched other people do. I knew you, you've been into it for a while, but I really didn't have any kind of concept other than the title of, you know, like role-playing games or whatever you call this. What Actually, what do you call it? Huh? <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> Yeah, tabletop role-playing games. T tabletop role-playing games. I didn't really um, have an expectation. Uh, you 
you've never heard of I mean, you've probably heard of Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, I've heard of Dungeons & Dragons for decades, but, um, you know, never having experienced it myself, I didn't know what to expect, really. Uh, but ultimately, you'd say it was a positive? Oh, yeah. Ultimately, yeah, it was very positive. And you'd play again if I ran something for you? Sure. Yeah, and it, I, I think, too, I could see where a part of playing the game game and having fun doing it is who you're playing it with oh absolutely yeah that you would find a group of people who you're comfortable with and um because i could see that not everybody would be fun to play with yeah, oh, honestly yeah <laughs> yeah you guys all get along really yeah. well and i thought you y'all would have fun playing together so yeah i really wanted to make sure that group happened while we were all in the same place yeah but, yeah that's it. All right. Thanks. Thanks for being my guest. Cheers. <laughs> so, thumbs up to Shadow Dark. That's the game we played. Two thumbs up. Windy, too. You want me to not mix up? First off, you've never played a role-playing game before this. All right. Um, you never probably even heard of tabletop role-playing You're going to say all of that. Well, I'm saying it right now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, what, what did you enjoy the most about playing? The fact that it was team effort and we were working together, so. Yeah, more of a cooperative kind yeah. of game. Yes. Because you you've played other games with us, board games and yeah. stuff, and, and you don't really enjoy the competitiveness. I used to, but I don't any longer. <laughs> and a lot of them are really complex nowadays, so there's lots of rules yeah. and stuff. So, Did you feel like it was easy enough to pick up on? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It was... And you wanted to play a Fairly thief. I asked easy. you, between the four main classes, I said fighter, priest, thief, or wizard, and you chose thief. Correct. Any reason why? Um, the most interesting, I guess, to me? I don't know. Yeah. You ended up having a lot of you cool moments. You can be moments. sneaky and, you know. Yeah, you had a lot of cool moments, like when you snuck up that chimney and you found all that, that room full of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, there was a lot of, like, and the, the uh, team kind of made the assumption because I was small that I would fit through the chimney and be able to be lifted up. And That's right, you were playing a half the, Yeah. Yeah. What did you not expect to like about the game that you did? Um, it, was, it was more difficult than I thought it would be to get the clues for the final result. Uh, well, I mean, and having never played, I just didn't have a lot of expectations of what it would be like. Yeah, you didn't have a frame of reference or right. anything like that. Right. All right, and uh, question number two, what is it about tabletop games that would bring you back? I think that it was there was a lot of question to it and a mystery about it that maybe I enjoyed that I didn't think I would enjoy. Yeah, it kind of felt like you were playing through a mystery or something rather mm -hmm. than just playing a board game. And the fact that we didn't solve the mystery the first time. Yeah. Or, or what, what would you call it in gaming? Uh, an adventure. or a We didn't solve story. the adventure or the story yeah. yeah. the first time. So you want to come back and get the answers to it. Had you ever heard of games like Dungeons & Dragons? Yes. Did you have any expectations come into play? No. No, not at all. Okay. No. Cool. Well, that's it, really. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're welcome. But yeah. you're not using that. Yeah, no, I, I probably will use that. Would you say you enjoyed playing Shadow Dark? Thumbs up? Thumbs up. All right. One eyed. What were your expectations going into this since you played 5e but not Shadow Dark? I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> you, fit, you hit me <laughs> with an unexpected question. What were my expectations? Yeah. The difference between. D&D &D and other types of games, so I expected it to be a little, like, less number crunching, whatever, less complication, and, like, since we were all mostly new at this, I was hoping it was going to be pretty simple to catch on to, and just yeah. easy to jump into, I guess. And do you think this was easier than the games you've played in the past? Yeah, definitely less definitely less of like math and looking at our sheet and 
Like, I just remember when I played before, I was a wizard and everything was so complicated. It was like just all the spells had so many things you had to factor into it and I just was confused the whole time and so I didn't really want to do anything because I didn't know how to use any of my skills or anything but this one I felt like it was a lot more straightforward and everyone picked up on it pretty quickly so we all were able to kind of understand for the most part what was happening and despite that um, you chose to play a wizard yeah again. I just like I like wizards you know I like magic and fantasy so yeah. I had to be a wizard and I didn't really use I didn't get to the point of using really any spells because we didn't finish the game but when we start back again I'm going to try to like at least use one of my spells and see how it goes yeah. but yeah it was a lot easier to understand and to play the game this time and I think maybe I'm making an assumption here but it seemed like you probably enjoyed the more narrative style better than like you know th there was a lot of combat and more game mechanics involved before whereas this you were just kind of like going around the house and looting and things like that yeah I think it was more enjoyable I don't love like getting into character and like role playing as much because I just don't that's not my thing but like making decisions and playing with everyone else that was fun I did like the one moment of excitement when the giant attacked us but yeah I was the one who got hit so that wasn't as fun but yeah I, I like I like the whatever I've already forgot what you said but I liked the yeah more narrative narrative style, style. Yeah. yeah it was fun okay what did you think was the most fun thing about this game? I mean, I like the setting a lot, kind of the abandoned mansion, like Clue vibes, um, little spooky, little eerie. So I liked the setup and like, yeah, yeah you, the atmosphere. You enjoyed this adventure. Right? Yeah, the adventure, that's the word that I was looking for. And I mean, I liked playing with people I know really well, like that I feel comfortable with. That is a major factor for me. And even though I wasn't like super, I wasn't like running the show or like interacting a ton, but I felt like I was more interactive because I felt comfortable with the people I was playing with. Yeah, it was just fun. I don't know. Yeah, and just a <laughs> contrast, because the first time you ever played, you know, I was running a one shot at a bar and people were getting a little tipsy. Yeah. And I was having to introduce a lot of things and teach them a lot about 5e, so... Probably yeah. not as enjoyable as playing with people you know really well. Yeah, for sure. I just, I don't feel comfortable in a lot of settings. So being in like a quiet, calm setting with people I know is like the ideal situation for me personally. What would you be most excited about to play again? Or like what would draw you back to play another game? I mean, I think that like doing it with a people, a people, doing it with a group of people that I know, uh, whether it's friends or family, and also maybe some other kind of fun adventure, like you mentioned Jane Austen adventures, or like oh, I saw a cat role-playing game, that's right up my alley. Or like you mentioned one like that you were thinking of for like in Scotland. So different like different types of adventures that are more niche and would be fun to play. But I think just in general playing that style where it's more simple, not as much number crunching and with family and friends that I feel comfortable with. Yeah. So almost yeah. I think all three of you so far have mentioned playing with people that you know was yeah. really fun. And I know you say that's like that can make or break the game. So I yeah. feel that for sure. Alright, and okay, this is just a bonus question, but Shadow Dark, thumbs up? Yeah, I mean I didn't really know any that it was Shadow Dark, but it, it seemed good to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. It definitely seemed easier than Ivy, and yeah, yeah, it was good to me. You want to you want to shout out your channel? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna be awkward. Uh, about it. If you like books, I have a booktube channel. I read a lot of fantasy, so there could be some crossover there. Go check her out; she's awesome. Yeah, libraries and lattes, but you know. A little black cat. I like the black cat in the background. That adds to the ambiance. Maybe what was something you weren't expecting that you really enjoyed? Okay. 
All right. I think what I enjoyed most um, about the tabletop game that we played was the um, the creativity that came with sort of the the uh, parts of it that were the unknown. Like we were starting on this adventure, we had to be uh, we had to be creative along the way, um, and there were parts of it that were sort of mysterious. Of they didn't know every aspect of what was happening and what was to come. Um, and so those two aspects together, uh, I found uh, very interesting and, and fun, uh, fun part of the game. What would get you to come back and play again? Hmm. I think what would get me to come back and play again is I do think there's kind of a sweet spot in the, um, in the aspects that I mentioned of the intrigue and the creativity. I think there's a sweet spot of giving you enough setup making sure that you sort of know the parameters um, going into it so that the, the parts that are unknown or sort of mysterious are, are just the right balance. It feels like that's an important part of the, the gaming to give you enough information to have clarity, to feel like you're moving down a path, but then um, uh, to have enough intrigue and mystery along the way. So I, would, I think that for me it would be to draw me into another game would probably be to say, hey, Here's a game I want you to play. This is the setup. This is what the scenario is going to be. And this is um, what you're going to be trying to accomplish or the way the game's going to be taking you. Um, that would probably be the kind of thing that would draw me in. So a good hook. Basically. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. The, yeah, the good hook. Your outlined adventure. Center. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds so, good. Thumbs up to Shadow Dark, the game we played. That's right. Thumbs up. Uh, it was cool. It was fun. I can, I can picture uh, some of the uh, the intrigue and some of the journey that we went on even even now. So it's good cool. stuff. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, did you wash it? Right oh, it's good. Wild, <laughs> yeah. You want me to go again? Yeah. Yeah. So, what was the most fun for you playing your first role playing game? I think the most fun was the laughter that we had between the players. Once we finally got a rhythm of what we were doing and where we were going, and then as we kind of like um, leaned into our characters, that was really fun. And we had some good jokes and stuff. And then also just even as a after effect, I had a dream about the role playing game last night, <laughs> which was kind of funny and I was my character in my dream. so. I think sometimes it's fun, kind of like a movie. You think about things later and you say something funny to the people that were in your group or whatever. And we had a couple of those too, where we were calling each other by our names or whatever. So yeah, that was fun. You know, some of the banter and interaction between you guys, or even some of the NPCs that you met, the characters in the game. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. And even thinking about, um, well, kind of like how you had chosen our characters more, maybe based a little bit on who we were just as people. Um, that was kind of fun too. And we, you know, especially with uh, your mom as the one-eyed jeweler and you know, the little things. And so we kept teasing her and, and that was fun. The, the banter back and forth was, was cute and I enjoyed that. What would get you to play a role-playing game again? Hmm. Or like what would bring you back to the table to play again? Probably, I liked the setup of it being, the one that we did being in an old house that was run down or whatever, but maybe, maybe a world that I was more familiar with. Like we had kind of talked about like, you know, life during Jane Austen or the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Narnia or something. Um, Cause I'm not really into games like that. And so if I was kind of walking into something that I was more familiar, um, which yeah, could be a setting or a, a game setting. Game. Yes, exactly. Like yes. And you could have new characters. Like even as I'm sitting here thinking, like I love C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia, but we could have been maybe new characters I mean, I don't know if there's a game like that, but we could have been new characters in Narnia along with Peter and Edmund and Lucy and Susan and the yeah, White Witch, you, you know. You absolutely play a game like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, awesome. So maybe just more familiarity with, with the setting and... I didn't even give you guys a setting, really. I just threw you in yeah. for the adventure, so... Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. And actually, this we did it... Um, you know, we did it over the two nights, and I felt like the second night was a lot more fun than the first night. No, the, yeah, because we got into it more, and we were also able to talk about it while we weren't playing to understand a little bit better. So, yeah, um, yeah but the camaraderie was that was that was really fun. It was cool. Cool. I love laughing with people, so that was nice. It was fun to do with your family. Yes, it was fun because we do know each other so well, so we kind of could joke about our own personalities. Um, but yeah, I could see I could see a lot of different ways that different dynamic with different people. Yeah, it was, it was really fun for me 
to see all of you guys who I've known for so long mm -hmm. play this game that I do all the time. Yeah. With other people. Because I think that's never great. Know what people are going to enjoy about it. Yes. Know? Yeah. So that was cool for me. Well, and I think too, and I would say this, and I think you, I think you should use that part because I think what's cool is, I think for your first time you feel really weird, and you're like, I don't know what to do, and. Like once I had the freedom to do my little, you know, French accent thing, I loved that. that. That was so fun. And I was like, okay, this is really fun. Like, are you going to do this thing? You know, and all of this and then how we would go back and forth between our accents and stuff. That was actually when you kind of, when you really got into the role. Um, that was cool. That was really fun. So, That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that was great. So, Shadow Dark, thumbs up? Thumbs up. Yes, I would play again. Yeah, no, but, but it was cool. It was really, it was really fun. Cool. I'm glad we did it. Okay, last bonus question. Yes. <laughs> were there, did you have any expectations going into it? And were those expectations changed or challenged in any way? Mm. No, I really had, I think kind of even just with like the time thing and like what it was going to be, I had zero expectation because I, I had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like a, like a blindfolded walk in the forest. <laughs> and then you end up at a really nice waterfall. Um, yeah, I had no idea. So that was actually, that was good. I had that's nothing. The, that's what I was trying to go for, really. Yeah. Just throwing everybody in the deep yeah. end and being like, let's see if you enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm kind of the type of person that I probably, again, as we talked about offline, I like to know what my goals are. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a leader personality. So if I don't know what's going on, it's hard for me. I'm just, I mean, the first night I was pretty quiet. And then once I got it, then I was like, okay, yeah, let's jump in. Because I'm also, like, by nature, a performer. You know, I've done acting in the in the past. And so it's like, I can totally get into all that. But I, but I also didn't want to take that from anybody else, too. So I kind of had a hard time balancing. Party dynamics. Yes, yeah. Because, you know, I don't ever want to be the person around the table that's just talking all the time or whatever. So I wanted to be really aware of that. And... Um, yeah, but I had zero expectation. That's a lot of awareness for a first-time player. Really? Most people yeah. don't catch on that for years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, I wanted everyone. I, again, I'm an Enneagram, too. I wanted people to have fun. I wanted to make sure that I was also giving support while quelling my desire to be the star of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and to be the funniest one and to be the silliest one or just talk all the time, whatever. So, um, so I'm glad we did it in two sessions like that. In the biz, we call that main character syndrome. That's exactly it. I've seen that phrase a lot lately. And, you know, I've been the main character in musicals. And when you're the main character, it is all about you. So, the show. yes. And, but you also, and I've also been the understudy and I've also been the, you know, the background person, um, the swing person. And so I know how to do those roles. Um, and that's funny. I didn't even think about that. I, I kind of came to it with kind of that mentality of like a theater mentality, but like for you, like you're a, di you were kind of a different person as the game master. And I always tell you that, that I'm like, I love when your, um, accents come out and you're, you know, big words and all that. I'm like, I think everyone probably has that dynamic within them where that role playing is really fun. Yeah. And, and you cool. pull it out of them. That's you one know? of the things that I think are so cool about these games is yeah. you get to see that side of people you wouldn't normally see. Like yes. even my mom is like getting really into the role playing. I know. I was actually really surprised by that because that's not her normal personality. Yeah. This is kind of a, a fun way to keep doing that. Now I'm like, I want to be in a role playing group. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it is, you know what I mean? And you've heard me say in yeah. the past, it really scratches a lot of itches for me. Like Yes, and I get that, yeah. And so, yeah, if you're that theater person who's in between shows, yes. and you really want to improv and get yes. into a character, it's so much fun. Yeah, and it, that just hit me just as we're having this conversation. So, anyway, but, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yay! Well, thanks. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that's fun. Well, as you can see, they had some really interesting thoughts about the hobby, and I was just really excited to get to share this hobby that I love with some of the people that mean the most to me in life. I honestly didn't know if this would ever happen, but I'm really glad that it did. We had a great time, there were lots of laughs, some of us talked in bad French accents, and I got to try a role-playing game in an adventure that's been on my list for a really long time. So I think it was a win-win. If you're watching this video and someone came to your mind at any point during this video that you really want to get to try role-playing games, I encourage you to pull the trigger and just ask.
This experience has been a little ray of light in an otherwise dark time in my life, and I'm going to remember it fondly forever. Shout out to Kelsey Dion for making a version of the game that my family was on board with, and to Ben Milton for making an adventure that they really loved and enjoyed. And hey, while we're on the topic of encouraging people to play TTRPGs, me and a few other dungeon tubers came up with a community idea called GMUary. The idea is to encourage other people out there in the community to finally give a crack at GMing a game, doesn't matter what game it is, and encourage you to go out and ask your friends and family and other players in the community to play a game with you in what could hopefully be a safe and positive environment. Trying out your hand at GMing can seem like a massively daunting endeavor, but we thought it would be cool for the community to get together and encourage people out there to try GMing. Because maybe you're like me, and it turns out you like GMing even more than being a player. So look out for more details on GMUARY. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Consider liking, subscribing, or maybe even share this with one of your family members or someone that you really want to play games with. If you're interested in keeping up with me or other members of the channel, I have a Discord, which I'm going to link in the description below, as well as a Patreon, which I'm trying to get more games running, and eventually I'm going to have some games to help support me and my family that I can run for patrons. Patrons? Thank you guys for watching, and thanks everyone for your continued support and all of your donations to the Western North Carolina continued relief effort. There's still a lot to be done in our area, and it's going to be a long road towards restoration. If you want more information, check out this video. If you want to know about the supplies that I used during my game that I played with my parents, in-laws, and wife, check out this video. Thanks for watching all the way up to this point, and as always, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, make memories with the people that you love, and have fun.